Welcome everyone! When you first start getting more exposure to DevOps and Lean, you start to encounter quite a few skeptics. I had people saying to me, Agile is the new DevOps and Lean practices don't apply to software delivery, it only works on manufacturing. It was comments like this that prompted me to do some additional research into Lean and some of the additional fundamental elements of DevOps. In this video, we are going to touch on systems thinking a bit. We are going to focus on something known as the three ways, which is a key DevOps principle that bring the core values of DevOps, culture, automation, lean, measurement, and sharing calms to life. Okay, let's dive in. The three ways model was developed by Gene Kim and Mike Orzen, and the three ways they identify are systems thinking, amplifying feedback loops, and a culture of continuous experimentation and learning. I'm going to introduce you to each of the ways that you can read up on this model more in the DevOps handbook. So the first way systems thinking really emphasizes the performance of the entire system as opposed to the performance of a specific silo work group or team. This is really important element of DevOps. DevOps is about collaboration across functional lines, really breaking down those silos and focusing on the value streams that IT enables. Really, some of the outcomes of using systems thinking include not passing any defects to downstream work, always seeking to increase flow, and always seeking to achieve a profound understanding of the system. Let me share an example of the first way. Imagine you are organized in silos and when you decided to document the value stream for delivering features to your customer, mobile apps for example, you quickly saw that you are sending defects to your QA team and often all the way through to production. Once you did the work to understand the entire system, you were able to show with data that you were sub-optimizing. This discovery can lead to investments in automated tests, breaking down silos by embedding quality and operations engineers within the development team, and measuring our quality in cycle time, so you could understand how you were improving the system. The second way is all about amplifying feedback loops and really shortening those so that any corrections to the product that need to be made can be made continuously. And let's talk about what is meant by a feedback loop. It's a term that's thrown around a lot and it isn't always correctly understood. Basically, a feedback loop is a process that allows for reflection on its own output before determining the next steps that need to be completed. It's really an important part of any product life cycle. And if we can compress the time it takes to do that reflection or even figure out a way to use automation so that decisions and next steps can be made more efficient. The outcomes of the second way include understanding and responding to all customers, internal and external, shortening and amplifying all feedback loops, and embedding knowledge where we need it. There are many ways to improve feedback loops. One way is to build automated tests into the pipeline so developers can get feedback early and often. Another way is to embed operations engineers into the development teams. That way the team will learn from others. Imagine you had a quality dashboard on a screen out in your team area. You walked by it every day. It showed the health of your automated test scripts and that run every night. And if a certain threshold was met, the percentage of tests that failed, then the dashboard would turn red, for example. You would hold the release until you were back within your acceptable quality range. This is an example of a feedback loop. Your teams could easily see and often if we had quality issues and could deliver that feedback and deliver that feedback to the developers. The third way is a culture of continuous experimentation and learning. So it's all about creating a culture that fosters both of those things. Taking risk, learning from failure, and understanding that repetition and practice is the prerequisite to mastery, you need both of these things. You need the experimentation to help to improve them and the mastery of skills so that you can navigate out of a situation if needed. The outcomes of the third way are about making sure that you are allocating time for that improvement work. You are rewarding teams for taking risks and really introducing faults into the system to increase resilience. I think the third way is the most challenging for the most organizations. Imagine you created a culture of experimentation and learning by focusing on innovation and creating capacity in your teams so that they could test and learn, it could become part of your DNA, but that don't happen overnight. It would take investment and strategic alignment with your leaders to make sure you protected that capacity for the teams. 
and also you could create frameworks to make decisions about whether an experiment would continue or stop. It would help with managing expectations about what was a test and what was intended to scale. The biggest challenge in any large organization is figuring out how to protect the capacity. Often if pressures come in, that time will get used for feature delivery and teams will start to burn out and have low moral. A critical component is having leaders honor the capacity and courage the experimentation and learning culture. So that's the three ways. Systems thinking, amplifying feedback loops, and creating a culture of continuous experimentation and learning. This represents a lot of the foundational material of DevOps mindset. And I encourage you to learn more. A great resource to check out is the DevOps handbook, which explores the three ways in great detail. I hope you enjoyed this video. So don't forget to hit the bell for more interesting contents. And thanks for watching.